now then. Tis I. The situation may be more complicated than we anticipated. Indeed, I shall remain watchful. Ere thou goest, another matter requireth thine attention. A young maiden, full eager to... Wherefore inquirest thou of her fairness? Ugh, very well. Be she damsel or devil, I shall direct her steps to Revenant's tome. Save thine insinuations for one given to such impropriety. Thou shalt not find me amenable. Across the sea from the land of Domar have we traveled. We seek audience with the ruler of these lands. Who here speaks for you?
We have traveled some several thousand miles across the sea, from the nation of Doma, in hopes that we might find sanctuary in these lands. Sanctuary, Lady Yugiri? Aye. Lying within Othard, Doma was under the dominion of the Galian Empire, as I'm sure you are aware. When the War of Succession broke out in Galamald, we aspired an opportunity to free ourselves from the yoke of imperial oppression and took up arms. Only to be crushed. And so I gathered what few domes escaped the reckoning and guided them hither to your shores. A war of succession? Then the Emperor... Forgive me. You said that Doma was under Imperial rule, did you not? Doma is gone. Raised to the ground as an example to the other provinces. Twelve have mercy. And your people? On a ship anchored in Vesper Bay, flying borrowed colors. Many were complicit in the rebellion, or are kin to those who were. They will not come ashore until I send word that it is safe to do so. I sought an audience with your rulers, but was summarily refused. The lords of Ulda are not wont to entertain foreign refugees without suitable encouragement. Mayhap I was foolish to expect otherwise, but our supplies run low and we have young ones in urgent need of care. I have seen the tents outside the gates, however. We are not the first to seek asylum, nor will we be the last. Be that as it may, Ulda is no friend to Garlemald. Your tale would stir the hearts of many men and women here. The Sultana and the Syndicate will not be so easily swayed, but I shall see that you are granted an opportunity to plead your case. This is within your power? Well, far be it from me to boast, but I do have the ear of certain influential individuals. I am in your debt. Lady Yugiri, forgive me for observing, but your choice of attire seems like to evoke feelings of mistrust. Men are wont to fear the unfamiliar. We know this from experience. We seek only to spare the people of Uldar unnecessary disquiet. I shall defer to your experience, then. I thank you for your understanding. It seems I have urgent business with the Flame General. I leave our guests in your capable hands.
I, Yugiri of Doha, am honored to meet you at last, Your Grace. To mark this auspicious occasion, I should like to present to you the finest treasures our humble nation has to offer. Alas, the circumstances which have brought me here today have divested me of both time and dignity. I come before you as a pauper in direst need of aid, to request that you grant my people asylum. I, Nanamo, 17th in the line of Ul, welcome you to our city. Be at ease, Lady Yugiri. Although I myself have heard the tale of your misfortune, I would ask that you recount it once more for the benefit of the others here present. As you wish, Your Grace. For many years, my nation, Doma, suffered under the yoke of imperial rule, and my people yearned to be free. Thus, when a war of succession broke out in Garlemald, we sought to take advantage of the chaos and reclaim our liberty. Alas, our enemy proved less preoccupied than we had hoped, and our rebellion was put down in the most brutal fashion. Those who survived, how many do they number? More than 200 souls huddle within the cramped confines of our own galleon's hold. Yet this figure accounts for but one of a number of ships which escaped the purge. It is my hope that you will allow us all to dwell within your walls. Should that prove unfeasible, however, I humbly ask that you accept as many of my people as your resources allow. Pray understand we do not beg a boon, but propose instead an arrangement. We would serve as soldiers or tradesmen until our debt is repaid. What are the Syndicate's opinions on this matter? I, for one, think it's a marvelous idea. Lady Yugiri and her people strike me as an industrious lot, and there are parts of the city which have yet to be fully restored. If they are willing to work, I see no reason not to let them. The head of the Mirage Trust is not known for his generosity. He sees profit in this. I agree. That said, these are foreign refugees. To admit them would require a formal resolution. Shall we call a vote? The law is the law. Lord Lolorito? Tell me, are you blind or willfully ignorant? Even now, our streets are choked with the displaced victims of the Calamity and Alamegan refugees. They live hand-to-mouth, subsisting on aid provided by the immortal flames, the cost of which grows ever higher. The wealth of Ulda is not without limits, my friends. And need I remind you that these refugees are prone to violence and criminal activity? You have all read the reports, I think. Without homes or employment, it is only a matter of time before men grow desperate and take that which they imagine has been unjustly denied them. Yet, knowing this, you would have us swell their ranks. Mayhap you think the brass blades and the flames are not hard-pressed enough? Some say the chairman of the East Aldenard Trading Company passes Gil thrice daily. This may explain how he came to be the wealthiest man in Uldar. Or it may simply be that he's ruthless beyond reckoning. Surely the Sultanate can support the few hundred domains Lady Yugiri represents. That our resources have been taxed, I do not deny. But we are hardly in danger of financial collapse. I move that an exception be made. An exception, Your Grace? I am suddenly reminded of a similar debate some years ago regarding a number of Alamegan refugees, if memory serves. What were your words that day? <sighs> ah, yes, the law is the law, and so our visitors remained in little Alamego. Mayhap our wise and benevolent Sultana 
would be so good as to enlighten us as to which other of our laws should not be upheld? Mind your tongue, Lolorito. My lord, I share your concern for the welfare of our great nation, but we must endeavor to take a longer view. You know as well as I that people can be a resource still more precious than you. Precious or not, they were never yet so reliable. And unlike those who frequent your establishment, I have no desire to gamble with my future. Uldar's greatest asset is, and has ever been, her material wealth. We risk this at our peril. One need only look to Telegi Adelegi's example for evidence of the danger in allowing sentiment to dictate policy. How far the vaunted Mirage have fallen, both in repute and profitability, since he began employing refugees. How I choose to conduct my affairs is not your concern, my lord. A proposal has been tabled. Given its urgency, I move we forego further debate and call a vote. To accept the Doman refugees or not. Those in favor, I bid you remain. Those opposed, I bid you leave. That it were within my power to welcome you and your people, Lady Yugiri. As you have observed, however, my authority in such matters is regrettably limited. Without the consent of the Syndicate, I cannot act. I understand, Your Grace. And I appreciate all that you have done on our behalf. The nerve of the man! If that bastard had not forsaken the eastern trade route, little Alamigo would now be thriving. Oh, that you should have traveled so far under such dire circumstances, only to be refused in this manner is utterly unconscionable. Pray, accept my sincerest apologies. Now that the Empire no longer poses an immediate threat, they see little reason to maintain the pretense of unity. The Monitorists have grown especially defiant of late. Lord Lolorito most of all. But this is neither the time nor place for that discussion. <laughs> 